During the pandemic, we had to forego our roundtable where guests with a wide range of political perspectives, points of view would come in and weigh in on the week's top stories. This week, Florida sued the Biden administration over the vaccine mandate and with a special session on COVID related related policies coming up next week, it's time to take that dive and welcome back two of our all stars. Both are South Florida attorneys involved in business and governmental issues. Marilee Cancio in Cape Coral with us today, also an influential voice in the Republican politics in Florida and beyond. And Chris Smith in Fort Lauderdale, a former Democratic state senator and rep. It is so great to yeah. have you, and I wish you were here with us. I know. <laughs> I wish I was there, too. Nice to talk to you, Lynn and Michael. It's great to have you I both miss back. you guys. Uh, yes. <laughs> let's begin with uh, th this latest court ruling out of New Orleans where the appeals court said the president's uh, widely brooded, you know, new policy saying that uh, companies with 100 employees or more had to mandate max, uh, mass or vaccine vaccines vaccinations by January 4th. The court says you got to prove that it's constitutional. Marilee, what do you think the fate of that policy is going to be? Look, that's going to be challenged all over the place. There's the court found that the petitioners, which included several states and private individuals, raised good issues that this mandate is unconstitutional. This is an attack on small businesses, frontline workers, and the American people. And I think that's what we're going to see across the line. The Constitution uh, was made not to limit the power of the people, but to limit the power of the government. And this is a complete outreach by the federal government. So, so Chris, is this a ruling by the Fifth Circuit for the Fifth Circuit, or does this apply nationwide? It apply well, it will be applied nationwide, but I think you're going to see this fast track up to the Supreme Court. This is such a huge issue and such a public health issue. The Supreme Court is going to have to weigh in soon. And then it's going to be very interesting to see this new makeup of the Supreme Court, how they rule on this type of case that historically um, has been allowed within, within the United States. Uh, but the Supreme Court is going to have to weigh in soon. So the new I think it's, I think it's yeah. important to say that uh, being against the mandate, it's not being against vaccines. This has to do with the Constitution and the power of the federal government. And I think it's important to differentiate that because we went from saying two weeks to slow the spread to ha having two shots to keep your job. And I think that's a problem. I'm fully vaccinated now with two shots, but what if they start demanding that you have a booster? What about a fourth booster like in other countries? So it gets to the point that where does it stop? And I think you need well, to it, listen it, to the science. This is, this is a public health crisis. 750,000 Americans have died because of this. After 9-11, when 3,000 died, we, we gave up some liberties and we did some stuff. But now you have 750,000 dead. I think that if we have a public health crisis, that we do have to do these things. Um, if you look at school children, and we've all discussed it, from measles to smallpox, we've all had to get vaccinations in order to stay in this society. And I think that, that that's, that's totally reasonable when you look at 750,000 Americans have died. You know, that, that was always one of the questions I had, Mary Lee, was that what's the difference between mandating this vaccine and mandating the vaccines that I know, you know, my kids couldn't go to school before I could yeah. prove that they got a whole series of vaccines and, and doubled yeah. and boosters. What, what is the difference? That you well, see. because there's a whole series of different vaccines out there. For example, the flu kills many people every year, but businesses don't say you have to get the flu vaccine every year in order to keep your job. So I think people need to make their own decisions. And what we're seeing this year in elections across the country is, for example, that the parents should choose what's best for their children. This just happened this week as well when some of the school board districts sued and, uh, the state because the state said that the schools had to listen to the parents. And what we're seeing is that the parents are winning this. The parents should make the choices for their children and for themselves. And that's what it's coming out to. This is not about the vaccines. This is about the mandate. And this is what we're seeing at the moment yeah. is that the federal government wants to control our lives. And this well, has to You have to listen to all other, yeah, another Chris, thing. Chris uh, Smith, let, let, let me okay, ask I'm you sorry. this question because Mara Lee raised it appropriately and that is you know governor DeSantis has made this whole argument philosophically about personal choice and parental 
supervision, uh, the rights of parents to be able to choose for their children. That, I mean, that, that is what this really has come down to, isn't it? Well, what about me as a parent? I have a child in public school and I have the right to be able to send my child to school without fear that he's gonna come home with a deadly disease. There are other parents, there's a majority of the parents who want to send their kids to public schools but don't wanna subject them to a deadly disease. So explain so that, about Cri one set Chris, of though, yes. explain that because if you as a parent decide your child is vaccinated, why would you be afraid going to school, getting a deadly disease? I mean, wouldn't that be the fear of the unvaccinated? Well, no, because vaccines aren't 100%. And I want my child amongst as many vaccinated people as possible. So if, if, I, if he's going into a classroom of 27 unvaccinated kids and he's vaccinated, I'm, that's not as safe as him going into a classroom with 30 vaccinated kids. So whatever means we have to add safety to our kids, we talk about school safety all the time, it's more safe for him to be in a classroom full of vaccinated kids than a classroom of unvaccinated kids. So these new OSHA regulations, if I'm, if I'm reading them correctly, Mary Lee, do allow employees to choose. It allows the employer to let employees choose whether or not to be vaccinated, but those who choose not have to go through very stringent ac activities like every weekly, uh, weekly tests and wearing a mask 24-7. How is that different than it might be now? Look, Lena, uh, where I am uh, right now in Southwest Florida, one of the a small business, but it does have over 100 employees. He just came on the news this week saying, look, I I had to tell my employees they all had to be vaccinated because we just can't afford without the supply chain issues, worker shortage, all caused by this Biden administration policies. I couldn't afford to have any more expenses to have to test my employees uh, at this point. So it's just more constrictions on small businesses and it limits the rights of the people. So right now it's for businesses over 100 employees, but the way that this was done, this a federal mandate through OSHA, it's because it was through the emergency powers. But if it's an emergency, it took them two months to enact it, and it's not even gonna take effect until January after the Christmas holidays. So it's really not an emergency. And so they're trying to go through the emergency channels instead of going through the proper legislative channels. And that's why I think it's gonna fail uh, because of that it's not uh, constitutional. Yeah. Yeah, well, the government, OSHA, has until 5 o'clock Monday afternoon to present mm -hmm. its arguments. We'll see what they say. We have questions about the special session that begins next week. And let's take a break and we'll come back with our guests okay. on our virtual roundtable in just a minute. Welcome back. We are in the midst of our roundtable. Glad to have it back with Marilee Concio and Chris Smith, both influencers, one Republican, one Democrat. Chris, you spent all those years in Tallahassee <laughs> serving in the state house, the state Senate. What do you expect to come out of this special session this coming week? Well, I think with the governor driving the ship, you're going to get some um, some local, well, some, the state taking over from local governments and doing some preemptions on masks and doing preemptions on vaccinations and all of the stuff the governor's railed against. I think it'll be about two or three days of Democrats pushing back and bringing up other issues. But they, at the end of the day, this governor has been very effective in getting the legislature to do its bidding. So you'll probably see one comprehensive bill um, uh, um, preempting local governments from coming up with different COVID related or medical related laws. Banning private employer vaccine, we understand, is one of them. Taking yes. away liability protections uh, uh, for businesses. That, that Mary Lee, ad address that. That, I think, is probably going to be a real eye, uh, eyebrow raiser for some businesses as they watch this sausage being made. That, that's it, Melana. Uh, you know, like in New York City, one day 9,000 people lost their jobs. 2,300 firefighters couldn't report to work. Uh, that's what Governor DeSantis is trying to do for Florida to protect jobs. And at the end of the day, what we're living right now with inflation, scary times ahead, uh, you know, people's wages are worth less each day. Uh, just tomorrow, Monday, I have an employee starting. And the reason she's coming to work for my law firm is that we don't mandate the vaccine. We let our employees make their choices. 
and everyone in my office is vaccinated. One even has the booster, but this new employee, we don't require it from her. And I think it's important for people to make their own decisions. And that's what this governor is doing. And that's why the state of Florida is in a much better position than other states around the country. And that's why we see so many people from California, from New York, moving down to Florida, keeping me really busy with all the real estate they're buying. But the reason they're coming <laughs> here is because their economy works. Yeah. Chris, well, uh, on, uh, before on we, the other side, uh-huh. yeah, go ahead. Go ahead and respond. <laughs> well, so I own a restaurant in Fort Lauderdale. And there are a lot of rules that I may not agree with. But for the health and safety of the public, we do it. When I go into that kitchen, all of my cooks better have on a mask. They better have on gloves. They better not be back there sick because it's for the health of others, not just that person. And when you talk about firefighters, firefighters aren't allowed to smoke. They aren't allowed to be smokers. I mean, there are certain job requirements that you adhere to to keep your job. So if, if it's adhere to getting vaccination to keep your job, it's the same as not allowing our firefighters to smoke because they're susceptible to cancer and that, that's part of the job requirement for them. So there are a lot of job requirements people have in asking someone to get vaccinated for the health and safety of society as a whole is not going too far. There are a lot of requirements, even at the law firm, uh, OSHA requirements that we adhere to. We may not agree with them, but we adhere to them because it's for the health and safety of everyone else. And I think that's what this all is about. Not but just I think the there has to be a limit. It's everybody. Chris but Smith. We're talking about everybody. Chris. Mary Lee yes. Cancio, Chris Smith, you know from being right here at the round table, we got to go and we got to go. And uh, it was great to have you. This has been fun. Can't wait to see you back at the table. We'll get hope you here you do it in on, person the, uh, on the set yeah. soon, we hope. All right. All thank right, you both. Guys, thank you.